Hello, in this activity we're looking at how your diet affects biodiversity. So let's uh, look at that activity. And this is what the activity looks like that's attached to your weekly work, how your diet affects biodiversity. So real quick, what we will do is we'll go over how you can, um, you will record your diet for one day and how you'll use a, a carbon footprint calculator to estimate uh, the amount of land use and water use in um, your diet and then we will go through how to change your diet and then finally how to make a model that shows how changing your diet can affect biodiversity. So let's get started on this. So this PowerPoint will go through how to use, um, how to fill out this activity. So let's get started. So what is a carbon footprint? A carbon footprint is the estimated total amount of carbon released into the atmosphere by any entity that produces carbon dioxide. So you are an entity, you are a thing, and the amount of carbon that you make through your emissions, water, CO2, nitrous oxide, methane, using electricity, transportation, or anything else, recycling or not recycling, affects how much carbon is released in the air. That is also true for your diet the things that you eat have a carbon um, background on how it's produced, how it's transported, and certain items have a bigger carbon footprint than others. Have you ever considered how much carbon dioxide is released during the production of the things you eat? Meat versus bread versus vegetables versus fruit. So what you're going to do is record everything you eat and drink for one day. Right. For example, this morning Mr. Lindemann um, had toast and butter, and then for lunch, a chicken burrito, pita chips, and milk. So what you would do is you record all the things that you ate for breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, and snack. Record all those things. Then you're going to enter your meal um, onto an online tracker to determine the carbon footprint. So this online tracker, um, what it does is the annual impact of eating a specific food is calculated by multiplying the impact of one serving of that food by the times it is eaten in a year based on weekly estimates submitted by the user. These then are compared with the emissions of other daily habits. And those other daily habits are going to be um, gas emitted, how much land is used, and water use um, in the form of an eight minute shower. How many eight minute showers do you take? How much land is used? And then how much gas is um, emitted? So let me go ahead and show you that carbon tracker and we're gonna use that for um, figuring out. Um, so to get to your carbon tracker, go to Haiku and open up to assignment 31 and scroll down until you find directions how your diet affects biodiversity and there there will be a link to the carbon tracker so click on that link and this page will come up so on this page there's all kinds of good information but the big thing we want is this your carbon tracker so the first thing I did is I had and I'm going to go ahead and First thing I had is toast. So you just click on this, and toast is the same thing as bread. They don't have toast, but they do have bread. So in a lot of cases, whatever you eat, you'll have to go to the next closest thing. And we're just looking for an estimate. So I have bread, and I eat that five days a week. And so. Click find out. And this is um, the estimate. So um, it tells me I have 12 kilograms of greenhouse gases, and that uses 79 showers. And there's nothing in here on land use. Then it compares some other things. How starches compare, so bread, oatmeal, pasta, um, kilograms of greenhouse gases, so rice has the most, pasta the second most, oatmeal, bread. So if I was um, going to change my diet, um, I would not change it to rice, which would cause a bigger carbon footprint. I might change it to potatoes, though. So then I go back to my, I go back to my chart, 
and on wheat toast I go ahead and put in the information 12 kilograms of greenhouse gases were produced and 79 showers nothing is put here because uh, we did not have any land use then I would go ahead and I do the same thing for uh, the um, chicken, the cheese, the potato chips, and the milk. Right, so I will quickly show that and then we'll enter in these things. So if I want to do uh, my chicken, I go ahead and I click on chicken. And I have that for lunch every day, so three times, three to five times a week. And I can see that uh, with my chicken, I produce 285 kilograms of greenhouse emissions. Um, I use 200, that's equivalent to 292 showers that last eight minutes, or it's equivalent to the land of 352 meters squared, which is one tennis court. So I can go down and look to see how proteins compare. And chicken's one of the better proteins, beef being the worst. So if I was going to change out my chicken because I didn't it was causing too much greenhouse effect I might go ahead and uh, do eggs or tofu which is a better protein source if I want to reduce the amount of carbon in my diet so we go back and we record that so for my chicken cheese and potato chips I would have this much carbon footprint and I record each one right next to it I'd record the land used right next to that. And I'd record the water use in showers. All right. And I would do that for all the food that I eat. And again, you're going to have to change possibly this a little bit because there is a limited list of things on the carbon footprint calculator, which is just to give you an estimate of where your most carbon is. All right. In this case, most of my carbon is stored up in my milk and in my chicken. Sorry, my milk and my cheese, my chicken, right? And since milk and cheese come from the same thing, it's probably cows. So then I move on. Quarter often you have dairy. So um, up here, you're often you have these things. So for me, I had dairy at least once a day, and I had fruit, and I had grains. Right? And the protein should be here, it just didn't print out. So you just record how often you had these things per day. So if you had three glasses of milk, you'd have that. If you had vegetables, you'd have this. The idea is, do you have a balanced diet? You should have, a, all of these things should be checked out if you have a balanced diet. How can you alter your diet to reduce your carbon footprint but maintain a healthy diet? Now that you've filled out your chart, you can answer this question. How can you alter your diet to reduce your carbon footprint by maintaining a healthy diet? So um, what could you change on your chart? Um, what could you change about what you ate that would uh, possibly reduce your carbon footprint but still allow you to have a healthy diet? So uh, protein sources, what could you change on your protein sources or in your dairy or in your vegetables? that would still allow you to be healthy, still allow you to eat these things, but it would reduce the carbon footprint. That will conclude this first video on how to do your diet and find the carbon footprint for it. The next video I'll make, I will go over how to start analyzing and changing um, your diet, finding an alternative protein source.